Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Wednesday, the 14th day of October. Today during the service we will celebrate the life of a priest named Samuel who has one of the most unusual claims to notoriety um, in all of the feast days that we celebrate and I'll let you discover more about his life when we get to that in the service. We begin morning prayer right one on page 42 of the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue our service with the invitatory psalm. This morning we will read together Christ our Passover, which begins on page 46. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead and become the firstfruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. We continue with the psalm appointed for today. Uh, we will read together Psalm 84, which, can, which begins on page 707 of the prayer book. We will read the first four verses, the first six verses. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she might lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. The Gospel assigned for today comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, beginning at the 44th verse. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? The word of the Lord. We continue with Canticle 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will scream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. 
The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we can we continue reading about the life of Samuel Isaac Joseph Shershewski. The story of Joseph Shershewski is unique in the annals of the church. He was born on May 6, 1831, of Jewish parents in the Lithuanian town of Tarragogin. His early education was directed towards the rabbinate. But during graduate studies in Germany, he became interested in Christianity through missionaries of the London Society for, Prom for Promoting Christianity Among the Jews, and through his own reading of a Hebrew translation of the New Testament. In the year 1854, Sharo Shwesky immigrated to America and, earned the West and entered the Western Theological Seminary in Pittsburgh, to train for the ministry of the Presbyterian Church. After two years, he decided to become an Episcopalian and to finish his theological studies at the General Theological Seminary in New York City, from which he graduated in the year 1859. After ordination and in response to Bishop Boone's call for helpers in China, Shereshueshki left for Shanghai. Always facile in languages, he learned to write Chinese during the voyage. From 1862 to 1875, he lived in Peking and translated the Bible and parts of the prayer book into Mandarin. After Bishop Williams was transferred to Japan, Shereshueski was elected Bishop of Shanghai in the year 1877 and was consecrated in Grace Church, New York City. He established St. John's University in Shanghai and began his translation of the Bible and other works into Wendy. Stricken with paralysis, he regained his see in the year 1883. Cherishewski was det determined to continue his translation work, and after many difficulties in finding support, he was able to return to Shanghai in the year 1895. Two years later, he moved to Tokyo. There he died on October 15th in the year 1906. With heroic perseverance, Shereshueski completed his translation of the Bible, typing some 2,000 pages with the middle finger of his partially crippled hand. Four years before his death, he said, I have sat in this chair for over 20 years. It seemed very hard at first, but God knew best. He kept me for the work for which I am best fitted. He is buried in the Aoyama Cemetery in Tokyo next to his wife, who supported him constantly during his labors and illness. There we have an amazing life and amazing dedication to the gospel. We continue. Uh, with, by reading together the Apostles' Creed, which begins on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit, let us pray. We begin together by saying the Lord's Prayer followed by suffrages A. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep us this, keep this nation under thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. We continue with the collects for today. O God, who in thy providence didst call Joseph Cherishewski from his home in Eastern Europe to the ministry of this church and did send him as a missionary to China, upholding him in his infirmity, that he might translate the Holy Scriptures into languages of the land, that land. Lead us, we pray thee, to commit our lives and talents to thee in the confidence that when thou givest unto thy servants any work to do, Thou dost also supply the strength to do it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordained by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a moment to invite your prayers and thanksgivings. We give great thanks for this day. We pray for all those whose lives are connected to ours. We pray for our parish and we pray for our school, which as students coming back on campus this week. We pray for all those who are learning and especially those struggling with distance learning. We pray for teachers, administrators. We ask that they be given patience and their dedication may be well received and rewarded. We pray for our nation and for the world. Take a moment to offer our own personal prayers and thanksgivings. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside deep in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our prayers by saying together a prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining Morning Prayer today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.